Hey guys, this video is a continuation on the series on director's duties. Today we're going to talk about particular instances of conflict. Now, as you are aware, a director must not make use of his position as a director of a company to make a profit for himself. Uh, I talked about this in the previous video, the case of Furs and Tom Gies. If the director uses the fact that he is a director to acquire a profit, he will be accountable to the company for the profit. The company has the option of recovering the amount of the bribe or suing the director for damages, but not both. The company has to choose one or the other. I'll give an example later. In the Malaysian case of Mayasan and Malaysian Government Officer Cooperative Housing Society, Mahezan was a director and employee of the society. In a transaction for uh, the purchase of land where the society purchased land from a seller, one quarter of the purchase price of the land was paid by the seller to Mahezan as a bribe. So the society sued Mahezan and, and Lord Diblock of the Privy Council held that Mahezan breached his duty to the society because the society could have acquired the land at 25% lesser than the amount that he paid but for the bribe. That means it, the, the society could have purchased the land for less if not for the bribe. So the, the Privy Council held that the society was entitled to recover the bribe or sue for damages for breach of director's duties but not both. In that case, the society uh, sued for damages because the amount of damages was more than the bribe. Next case I'm going to talk about, Attorney General for Hong Kong and Reed. The Privy Council held that where a fiduciary, uh, a director of a company is a fiduciary, a fiduciary is someone who is held to very high standards. So where a fiduciary receives a bribe, he becomes a debtor in equity to the principal for the amount of the bribe. Therefore, the debtor in equity becomes a constructive trustee of any property that he acquires, that means he buys, using the bribe. A constructive trust is an implied trust okay, imposed by a court to benefit a party that has been wrongfully deprived of its rights due to either a person obtaining or holding legal property right which they should not possess due to unjust enrichment or interference or due to a breach of fiduciary duty. A trust is basically where somebody holds property on behalf of another. So in this case, because uh, someone, the fiduciary, has did something bad, he holds the bribe or the property that is purchased with the bribe on trust for the principal. So for example, if a director of a company receives a bribe or a secret profit and he buys a, a house with the bribe, okay? He will hold the house as constructive trustee on behalf of the company. And the company has the option of taking back the house which he bought using the bribe or the secret profit. And if the house increases in value, good for the company. But if the value of the house falls, the director who obtained the bribe or secret profit remains liable for the shortfall. Now, directors can be liable for breach of director's duties even if uh, the transactions they entered into were made innocently. I'm going to discuss the case of Regal, Hastings and Gulliver. The no secret profit rule is very strict, okay? So in innocence is not a defense. Now, Regal Hastings, the, the company, wanted to buy a lease over two cinemas, okay? So it set up a, a subsidiary company for the sole purpose of acquiring, a, for the sole purpose of buying over the lease over the two cinemas. The landlords who wanted to uh, grant the lease to the subsidiary insisted that the paid up share capital of the subsidiary be £5,000. But Regal Hastings, the company, only had £2,500. So how did Regal Hastings find the additional £2,500? Well, the directors subscribed for shares at £500 each. Okay, each of the five directors subscribed for 
for the additional shares at £500 each. But eventually, the deal for the cinemas didn't go through, okay? The deal collapsed, so, so the subsidiary had no further use to Regal Hastings and Regal Hastings and Regal Hastings sold off the subsidiaries and the directors made a profit uh, on the shares that they subscribed for. When the new owner of the subsidiary found out, they sued the directors and the, the court held that even though the directors had acted honestly because Regal Hastings had no money to inject into the subsidiary, the directors who subscribed for the shares were still liable to account for the profit they made from selling the subsidiary's shares. The court stated that the opportunity came to them in their capacity as fiduciaries of the company and therefore they had to disclose to the shareholders and obtain the consent of the shareholders at the general meeting. But because they did not do so, they had to account for the profit they made from subscribing for the shares and selling the shares for the profit. The common law rule is that a director who is a party to a transaction must disclose all information to shareholders. The contract okay, uh, between the company and the other party okay, is voidable and the director has to be accountable for all the profits. This principle is uh, reinforced in Section 157 of the Companies Act which states that every director or CEO of a company who is in any way, whether directly or indirectly, interested in a transaction, okay, shall as soon as possible, after the relevant facts have come to his knowledge, the director has to declare the nature of his interest at a meeting of the directors of the company. He has to send a written notice to the company containing details on the nature, character and extent of his interest in the transaction or proposed transaction with the company. The latter should also state the nature, character and extent of the, the conflict that may arise by virtue of the director holding any office in the company and, uh, and the nature and uh, conflict that will arise by virtue of the director holding any property. So thanks for watching this video on particular instances of conflict in the context of director's duties.